Michael Zeldin is the former federal prosecutor and host of the podcast That Said with Michael Zeldin. He joins me now from Washington, D.C. Michael, good to have you on. First, I'd like to hear your, your reaction to that speech by Trump where he lashed out at the judge overseeing the case and the district attorney. Will that hurt him at all? Well, the judge admonished everybody in the courtroom today to tone down their rhetoric. He didn't impose a gag order, which would prevent them from talking about the case altogether. But he did say, you know, it's time to lower the temperature. Trump apparently didn't hear him and has continued to attack the judge and attack the prosecutor and attack the whole criminal justice system as being corrupt and weaponized is their word of choice. So I think if it persists this way, the judge may bring the parties back and say, all right, I'm imposing a limited gag order, and here are the parameters of that. I wonder, though, why the judge didn't impose a gag order, because everybody knows that Trump really has no filter. What would be the purpose for not imposing a gag order at the very beginning? The First Amendment allows people a freedom of speech, and you don't really want to limit a person's freedom of speech to defend themselves against charges in a public forum. So I think they want to be very careful to make sure that those rights aren't impinged upon. But at the same time, you cannot, in that exercise of free speech, poison the jury pool, poison the process uh, in an unfettered way. So I think that we're trying to balance the rights of the defendant and the propriety of the charges and the criminal justice system to reach one, you know, hopefully happy medium. But we'll see if the president can honor that. I'm wondering about the arraignment today and your reaction to how that went. Uh, was that all standard procedure for a white collar case, aside from the, the fact that there was a former president uh, in the courtroom, which of course is very unusual? Pretty much. It took a little bit longer than we expected, but I think that was because the judge was cautioning the parties about what they should say and what they shouldn't say, and then setting the calendar for the case over the course of the next year. But in terms of the processing of Mr. Trump, the fingerprinting and the like, I think it went according to the book and nothing was a surprise there. In your opinion, is this a strong case against Trump? It's a arguable case. There's no smoking gun that is going to make this, in the parlance, a slam dunk. But it's certainly a triable case. They have alleged clearly the business records false statements. There's no question, but they were false statements. The question is, in furtherance of what other crime? Because it can't be just a misdemeanor because the statute of limitations has run out on that. So in furtherance of what other crime is the issue, the crimes that Bragg, the DA, said were federal campaign finance, state of New York campaign finance and possible tax, New York state tax cases. He hasn't laid that out in great specificity. And I think we'll have to just see how his evidence stacks up against those in furtherance of aspects of his charging document. All right, Michael Zeldin in Washington, thank you.